charts. I'm not going to be available this weekend. I'm going to be busy. Um, but I did want to go over Bitcoin and where we stand right now, and as well as take a look at some of uh, some historic charts and some other issues, um, you know, in the marketplace, and to give you a better perspective because I've noticed one person started freaking out. Are we on the right side of the trade? <laughs> um, well, let's go over and take a look at the charts, and we'll go over and see if we are. All right, when we were down here, you know, and I was, you know, the bullish case scenario and talking about, you know, how, you know, basically this is a great buying area, um, I was getting the same exact reaction. Uh, you know, are we on the right side of trade? Oh my God, we're going to, you know, lose. And the same kind of mindset uh, is applied when we were down in this area. And uh, so right now, as we're up in this area and I'm selling, you know, the same type of mindset again has applied. Now we have an exaggeration and this is mainly due and I've looked at the numbers and the addresses and, and whatnot. It's coming from the tether group of people. Um, those whales and that whole group has way too much power, unfortunately. Um, and what they're doing is they're exacerbating the, the numbers. But we've seen this exaggeration before. Let's take a look at BNB, for example. Um, it, anytime it went above the 21 to the 19 area, uh, this was an exaggeration, and we can see the divergence. Note this line right here. And that noted the large divergence that occurred, as well as I could see some symmetry down here. Uh, so this area becomes our, let's call it our yellow zone. And I'm going to show you a comparable yellow zone on uh, Bitcoin. And we can see that's where we're currently at, even after, you know, the big move up on here. And then we pull back. This is why I dollar cost average and I sell as we go higher. And then as we pull back, I, I start to exit the positions and whatnot. The ultimate target on this would be in that 17, low 17 range. And we can see that here. This is logical. And it could pull back all the way to the 16 and maybe all the way down to the 13 area. Uh, but this takes time to unwind. Uh, if I look at other coins, like let's take an example of VET. This is a historic chart. Had the similar um, overbought and, you know, I remember selling it up here and, you know, end of the world. I remember buying it down here and, you know, selling it up there and, end of the world again. I, I, I can't tell you that the same things repeat themselves. But uh, one of the things that occurs most often is that things come into equilibrium over time. So this was a good sell from here and he exaggerated. One, two, three, broke the trend line, then pulled back, pulled back up a little bit, and then continued on down. Well, it's the same thing that you're getting with your BNB and we don't know in the future how big of a pullback that will be. Um, if the market is truly bullish and Bitcoin um, has higher highs to go, uh, it's still going to have to close off and retrace um, statistically. It's just extremely unlikely that it's not going to pull back to this low 4,000 area. It's just, it's not, uh, you know, that is the only area that I would be looking to actually become a buyer and, and go purely long and not hedge anything. Right now I'm hedging a lot of my Bitcoin in this area because look, the divergences are all there. It has no support to the 5600 to uh, you know uh, mid 5000 range. There's nothing on the chart. And um, you know it's broken into three different cell zones. Now the only reason it's been able to do this is because those tether people, and they have been going over and converting to Bitcoin, and that's why there was that four to three hundred dollar um, premium on Bitfinex, because people are trying to buy Bitcoin in order to get out of tether, and uh, that's what was going on with that, and uh, that's why we are currently where we are, and we're exacerbated, we're parabolic in nature, right? Remember those parabolic moves? And we saw that before in the past. But once those moves close out 
and it comes back to equilibrium and you get that pullback well, this yellow zone right here notice that and the similarity I want you to notice the similarity between the one on Bitcoin and we see it right down here small epoch uh, high um, watermark height point right there and if we go further out we can see the geometry on the the pattern the type of pattern here where it breaks symmetry symmetry separated right here on this previous one created its own new symmetry right there created a divergence from this up point created a smaller consolidated inside range above the uh, prior high and then we have this divergence and then we're going up into a Gaussian slash Mandelbrot type of uh, geometry where our high uh, next level up is right in this area here from um, 6221 all the way up to 6429 and then once that closes out and we pull back we have to see if we get the continuation down to this point with exacerbation, maybe some news or something comes out. You know, the AG goes over and files criminal charges against Bitfinex, which would not be unlikely. Um, and uh, even with their IEOs and them trying to, uh, you know, put on a good face, there is a high probability of that occurring or some other news, who knows. But you get my point, and we've seen this, and then it bounces up back up to this zone up here and then continues breaks and then continues down and retraces 61.8 percent as we have seen in the past it do majority of time that's where Novogratz is wrong in the short term um, you know he's a really good macro and I believe in his views but uh, nobody's minding the fact that we have to go from balance to uh, imbalanced and balance and back and forth again um, but this is bullish longer term with us doing this so that that's a good thing but still we we need to go over and test our supports all those people that bought down here and the big whales that are holding from here you know <laughs> where do you think they're going to be sellers and you're absolutely right so that supply has yet to take effect and uh, it's going from the smart traders to the the dumb traders so the dumb traders are the ones who are buying up here in the highs um, at least short term and uh, anybody who buys Bitcoin for the long term, for years on out, you know, is my opinion is smart period, <laughs> wherever you buy it from. And so that's a moot point. But short term and technically and the way that we trade and what I do, uh, this is a uh, persona, no, non persona grata, which is basically a, a person of no interest and uh, you don't want to be a buyer it's it's definitely overbought and it's just a matter of time uh, the one thing that we do not know is the tether people you know uh, how destructive how much buying power they have how far they can push it that's an unknown quantity so we'll see but you see all the the information that I'm pointing out here um, I'm pointing in all the logic and uh, you know it, there's nothing for us to do until we get that that pullback and we see what kind of uh, movement we get from there and uh, that's going to be up to the marketplace so I'm very confident about the position and where we are right now and uh, you know it's just is what it is and uh, I stated this before uh, so there's nothing to be you know uh, questioning or contemplating it is what it is and and uh, this is the way it looks but anyway you see that point so this area here comparable with a, a BNB and when everybody was freaking out about it being way up here we see what the effects are later on and uh, it did pull back even in the bull market so there you go and uh, we'll continue watching and and uh, this has been the case for many different uh, coins so anyway, there you go. That's my update for the weekend. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will talk to you later.